It's the 8th of December in 1963, and the annual Australian Spearfishing Championship has commenced at Aldinga Beach. Among the participants to defend his title is the Australian-born former champion, Rodney Fox. Fully aware that none of the other participants had reached the point where the depths drop off to about 25 yards, the 23-year-old life insurance salesman and defending champion from Adelaide, Australia, dove straight into the water, heading straight for that point. And with luck being on his side, that spot turned out to be the best decision he had ever made. At least at that point in time. Rodney had just spotted a large, dusky moorwong near the rocks, so he began stalking the fish, his gun right out in front of him to take a shot while using his other hand to balance himself. Unbeknownst to him, the dusky moorwong wasn't the only one with a target on its back. Just as Rodney was about to squeeze the trigger, the worst happened. An enormous force slammed into him from his side. Rodney saw himself moving through the water at a speed he had never swum at in his entire life. Whatever this was had completely knocked his mask off his face and his gun out of his hands. Initially, still trying to understand what had just happened, he was convinced that it must have been a submarine that had rammed him. However, after a quick rethink, he realized and accepted the reality that this most likely was a big shark. While the gigantic great white shark flapped its tail, Rodney could feel the alternating surge that it produced while it was still clamped into the left side of his chest. Stuck in the mouth of the beast by his chest, Rodney's legs helplessly dangled by the shark's side as he was dragged deeper underwater. Soon enough, Rodney was awakened to his present situation because he was now feeling the pressure from the beast that had its jaws clamped to its chest. He realized that something had to be done immediately so he would be released. Taking matters into his own hands, literally, he groped around the side of the shark's head in an attempt to gouge its eyes, which actually proved successful, considering that the shark immediately released its grip. Taking advantage of its release, Rodney immediately stuck out his right arm to push back the shark, only for his arm to completely disappear into its mouth, ripping off the underside of his hand. And before it could close its jaws, he quickly yanked his hand out. This force resulted in the ripping and breaking of all of the tendons in his hands, as the shark's razor-sharp teeth grazed his arm. Aware that the shark was coming in for another bite, Rodney immediately tried wrapping his arms and legs around its body, giving it a bear hug to dodge its attack. But while holding on to the shark, he was slowly running out of air, and immediately pushed himself to the surface to catch big breaths. Taking those desperate breaths, and also taking in his environment, Rodney realized that he had blood covering the entire ocean, he felt like. And as he looked back down into the ocean, he saw a massive big head poke its head from the middle of the blood-stained water, coming back for another bite. At this point, all that Rodney could think about was how was he going to stop it? And so he resorted to kicking it as hard as he could. Somehow, this diverted the shark's attention to Rodney's buoy, where there was a fish float, which it immediately swallowed. It had had its lunch, and thankfully, Rodney wasn't on the menu this time. At least, for now. After the meal, the beast turned around and found its way back into the deep waters. But the deeper it went, the more Rodney realized that the buoy was hitched to the lead weight belt he had on. In preparation for the next series of events, Rodney took in a few more deep breaths, and in a matter of seconds, the beast pulled hard on the rope. And Rodney was sent diving straight into the water even deeper than he was the first time. Deeper and deeper, he continued to descend with the waters roaring past his ears while he struggled to find his quick release. Still trying to find an escape, Rodney began losing consciousness, and he could feel himself let out the last breath that he had in his lungs. This meant that Rodney's next couple of breaths was going to be water. Tired of putting up a fight, the young man was starting to accept defeat. But just then, the rope suddenly snapped a few inches from the lead weight belt. Call this what you want, but this was the first miracle of the day. Apparently during the attack, the shark slightly cut the ropes, making it too weak to withstand the pulling. Now, while the chaos was happening underneath, 
Nearby fishermen at the top of the water noticed the disturbance in the water, and the fact that it was slowly turning into a pool of blood. Hence, immediately Rodney got to the surface, they spotted him and lifted him aboard. Upon lifting him onto their boat, Rodney's entire stomach and intestines spilled out of his gut and onto the floor of the boat. With no experience in the field, all the men knew to do was to carefully push his intestines back using their fingers, and they began speeding onwards towards the shore. After arriving on the shore, the fishermen carefully lifted up Rodney's body from the boat, transferring him into a vehicle that took him directly to the Royal Adelaide Hospital. He was soon moved into the theater for emergency surgery, all in the space of an hour. Fortunately, the vascular surgeon to operate on Rodney had just returned from a special training that covered Rodney's exact case. During the pre-surgery examination, it was observed that all of the ribs on Rodney's left side were just broken, exposing his lungs and clavicle to severe damage, while his scapula had a hole bitten through it. But that wasn't all. His diaphragm had also been ruptured, and the bite from those razor-sharp teeth opened up his abdomen, exposing several of his major organs. According to Rodney, the presence of the fishermen was, indeed, a wonderful thing, because if they had even been a minute late from being at that exact spot at that exact time, the shark would have come back up to finish its meal. And according to the doctors, if he was delivered to the hospital five minutes later than he was, he would have bled to death. Following the entire procedure, it was recorded that, because of all of these injuries, Rodney had received 462 stitches, including 29 in his lung and 92 in his right arm and hand. And for a long two months of pain and the dreadful memory of the incident, Rodney was bedridden while the stitches healed. After what was the most gruesome attack and what was an even more miraculous recovery and survival, you'd imagine that Rodney would stay as far away as he could from the ocean and its wonders and horrors. However, that wasn't the case. Just three months later, Rodney fought through not just his physical healing, but also the countless panic attacks that caused him to imagine himself surrounded by sharks every time he jumped into the water. Left with scars and a shark tooth embedded in his right wrist, Rodney had every reason not to go back to diving. But for whatever reason, the experience only drew him closer to the water. It gave him a passion for these sharks and led him to dedicate 60 years of his life to protecting the most feared underwater predators. He went ahead to create Rodney Fox Shark Expeditions, which was the world's only ocean floor shark experience. A few years later, this creation led to a call from Steven Spielberg requesting his existence in obtaining footage of these sharks for the box office 1976 film, Jaws. And later in 2001, aiming to educate people on these animals and their importance to the ecosystem, Rodney, along with his son and Dr. Rachel Robbins, established the Fox Shark Research Foundation. Ever since then, Rodney Fox has spent hours of his life learning about these species that years back were so close to taking his life. Now, tell us what you think. Would you have gone back, or would you have stayed as far away as you could from the water for the rest of your life? <laughs>